What is up YouTube Tube High Tech Lab here. I'm back in the off the grid room and I have an awesome update. A new inverter. So this was sent out by Fox Power. Uh, they want me to do a review on it. Uh, they didn't pay me for anything. They just sent the unit out. Uh, they were going to send out a 4,000 watt unit, but I was like, hey, can you upgrade it to a 12,000? And I paid the difference. So I'm working with this Unistrut right here. I'm building a rack. This piece that goes front to back was added. I'm over here adding this piece. I was just drilling the hole right here uh, to mount it, which was quite fun with all this bus bar. Um, but I was able to make it. So pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this inverter right here and have it on one side on the strut and this new inverter here is going to be this one so they're side by side and then I'm going to come out of my gutter into the back of the inverters um, with two three quarter inch conduits per inverter and they're going to tie on to these bus bars with these chair lugs. I'm going to take this and go back to back kind of like that so one set will go to one inverter and the other set will go to the other inverter. I researched fuses. I can put a fuse in line with the bus bar. Um, just bolt it on. So that's what I plan to do uh, in the future. But as we expand, obviously, you know, with the 32 batteries, I have more than enough um, ability to uh, run two inverters. One will only be on for the bulk of the time. But what I really like about this inverter is if you look on this one at the output voltage it's 227 volts so by the time you go any reasonable amount of distance you're down around 220 somewhere in there and that's too low for a lot of appliances to operate at this unit right here is around 240 to 242 volts which is a lot more uh, useful for um, for our situation because our loads are uh, a significant distance away from the source so I'm going to keep going, putting together this Unistrut rack, and I'll keep you guys updated as I go. So here we have Mr. Assistant Clark. We have the bus bars all protected with a, it's actually a welding blanket. It's thoroughly wrapped around to protect us while we remove this inverter from the wall. Go ahead. So we have the inverter pulled off the wall. What we went ahead and did was, uh, these are the two pieces that I'm going to be putting uh, for the frame that will support the, the two inverters in the future. We made it almost like a table with a blanket and we took that inverter and laid it down on its face and now it's safely on the floor. And that weighs how much? Uh, about 180 to 200 somewhere in there. Let me see the muscles. The muscles. Ah oh, yes. Ah oh, yes. Beautiful. And then we had a ratchet strap from the, um, if you look behind here, from the frame, and that was underneath the inverter. So all we had to do was just tilt it forward and lay it on its face. So now we're gonna get that steel plate out, get this ready to go, get the rack back together, and I'll be back. So here I have my rack put together, nice and strong, all bolted together. As you can see, so one inverter is going right here, the other is going right here. I have a couple of holes pre-drilled. We're at the point where we're ready to throw the new one, that's the new one, that's the old one, um, up here on the rack. So once my stepdad comes, we're gonna go ahead and get this hung. So here I began getting the electrical in. I punched a one inch uh, knockout in the back. I still need to get a bushing on there. That comes out through here through some seal tight up into my gutter. I've got my wires in. I just need to connect onto this grounding bushing up here. And then I have another hole punched because I'm going to do the same thing in this inverter. I'm going to go ahead and get this wired up. Pretty much all this is is you have your green which is your ground. This lug right down here normally pokes through but I just flipped it around because I'm doing all the wiring internal. So that would just go in there like that. And then your white wire is your neutral. Pretty much what you're gonna do, well at least what I'm gonna do, is pull all these terminals out back here and go straight onto the breakers. Because as you can see, there's a couple of small wires. I don't feel comfortable having those small wires taking the full capacity of the system. 
Um, so I'm just gonna go straight on to the circuit breakers. It's, it's a much stronger connection. There's less splices and it'll be better. Now, the manufacturer doesn't really recommend opening the unit. They actually have a warning sticker on the side that there's dangerous voltages, but I, I don't feel comfortable having exposed, um, you know, not in conduit coming off these terminals. That's the only downside with these inverters is they don't have very good termination. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this hooked up and then I will be back. So jumping forward a bit, I have it all hooked up and powered up. I have my battery cables down here and I actually need to change out uh, these lugs up here because with the way these cables are, this uh, arrangement will not work. Um, one of the only downsides is the, um, the manufacturer doesn't recommend having any uh, material between the lug and the actual mounting surface. Uh, it wants direct, they want direct contact. Now I need to put these two barrel lugs up here on the inverter because I have, when I put these wires in, I measured them out and have the second parallel run of equal length uh, set up. So that way uh, the, um, the wire will be, it'll be equivalent to a 400 amp capacity cable but it'll be two parallel runs. Um, so I'll put these same terminals on the inverter eventually. I need to get these terminations. Uh, they're a little bit tricky to get. But uh, once I get that, I'll have the second parallel run set up. But this is good for 200 amps at 48 volts right now, um, which is equivalent to 9,600 watts. So I could still use this inverter about three quarter load uh, and be fine. So here we are all powered up, um, mounted on my strut. I got this second inverter also connected on and whatnot. Got my labels, my beautiful labels. You can see the seal tight in the back is all uh, in. I've got, I still gotta do the grounding bushings on these, but they're a pain in the butt and I don't have the tool I normally use. But wires all pulled through the gutters all the way down and around and I have the uh, the blue inverter is feeding this whole panel board that's my main distribution and then the black inverter on the left feeds this top section of this split bus panel currently I don't have anything running out of here on this top section because I'm using that inverter what I have this is my input from my generator this 60 amp breaker this, um, I'm trying to remember, I have it all labeled on the uh, dead front, but that's not here right now. Um, I have another 60 amp breaker um, that was going to the transfer switch that's not really uh, used. Actually, that's this 30 amp. And then I have a 60 amp breaker going to the blue inverter and a 40 amp breaker going to the black inverter. So when the generator's running, I can pick and choose which inverter I want to uh, use as the battery charger. And what that allows me to do is that allows me to use this inverter as the battery charger and it'll pull about 30 amps on the generator. And instead of then having the reduced capacity on the generator, because uh, it's a, it's a uh, 14 kilowatt generator, instead of only having, you know, six or seven kilowatts left over to run the rest of the loads, this way with this one charging and this one still in invert mode powering everything um, will allow me to still have a full 12 kilowatts of, uh, of capacity. So instead of, you know, bottlenecking the generator and tripping breakers like I already have, um, it simply will still have the 12 kilowatt capacity. Now the one thing I really like about this inverter is the user interface. It's also super quiet, but let's get go more on this user interface. Before on like this one, we had a lot of dip switches on the bottom, but what's really, really the, the, my favorite part of all things on this inverter is this user interface. So we can hit menu and we have multiple different options. We have, we could set our battery type. So in other words, our charge voltages, our charger current, uh, the low battery cutout, the input range, so what voltage it'll accept from the generator, and battery priority, which means if you want it to always be, you know, using the batteries, like if you're using this kind of like a uh, a UPS, 
or whether you're using it, you know, for solar or off grid, that would be what you'd set that for. So let's go to, oh, and also frequency options. So 50 or 60 hertz, this unit will do. Let's go under uh, charge current, because this is a great example. We can hit select, and then you go to the setting you want, right? So let's say we want 50% charge current, then we hit select, and it has this black box come up, and that shows us that's what's activated. So it's real easy to do. It's, you know, not dip switches or dials or anything, and it's pretty self-explanatory on how to use the uh, the control panel and I really like that about this inverter. If you're really interested in this inverter I'll be doing a more uh, detailed review uh, style video as compared to installation style video so stay tuned for that. Um, other than that, that that about concludes our video today. Uh, this has been High Tech Lab. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys soon in the review video for this inverter.